This is the foundation piece hummingbird and you're going to start with these three sheets of paper. Now these are special paper, they're a little bit thinner than your normal copy paper which means they're easier to sew and easier to tear out once you're finished. So you're going to have four parts, you can see those there, all four parts. You're going to need to cut those out from your uh, pieces of paper to those black outer lines. So ignore the seam allowance and uh, well that is your seam allowance and cut out to those black lines. And now we're gonna start putting piece A together over here. So I have my piece of paper there and foundation piecing is great because you can literally use up all of your scraps to get this done. And what we need to do is first of all, essentially we're counting. So we're putting piece one onto piece two. Now to do that, we are gonna fold it along that line and fold it all the way out to the edges don't just fold that little bit and that's where we're going to start so we i would crease it with um the paper this way up first you can see where you're putting that line and sometimes it's if you've got lots and lots of lines it's easier to kind of put them all in before you start so you can see where you're going to have to go but we're going to take that now and piece a1 is going to be our little tiny triangle. So I need to make sure I've got a piece of fabric under there that is big enough to cover that triangle. Obviously, I've got a lot of excess on there. Now, I'm going to trim a bit of this off, but I would recommend if you're just starting out with foundation piecing, leave much bigger bits than you think you're going to need because until you get the hang of where those angles go, it can be a little bit tricky. So I'm going to pop that there. I'm going to fold it back along that line and that's going to give me plenty of seam allowance. Now, piece A2 has got to be, I've got a big enough piece here that I can, I can fit it on. But what you need to remember is when you fold that over, that's now where my piece is going to be. So I've got to make sure that when I line that up, let me just get it along a, a straighter edge there. So if I line that up, I've got enough fabric covering everything. And it's really hard to get it round your head as to which bit goes where. So your first bit, A1, that fabric wants to be right up against the paper. A2, which is this shape here, wants to be on the bottom of your pile. So I'm gonna just pop that there um, and then just flip it back over. And I'm looking at this shape here. Again, if you're starting out, what it's worth doing is marking the four or five corners of your piece. Oh, so that's A4, sorry. So A2 uh, is here and here and here. So I can draw a little line around that and just make sure that my blue piece is gonna be completely covered by that. What you don't want is something that's either gonna slide off to the side where you're not gonna get full coverage on your fabric or something where you might end up with a funny angle. So that's what we're gonna want. Now, I'm gonna open that back out and I would usually pop a pin in there just to hold everything in place. I'm then gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew just this little line across here. I'm not going to go past it too far on either side, just that little line there, because sometimes when you go too far past, you'll find you've got trouble when you're kind of folding it in the other ways. So let's go and grab the sewing machine and pop that piece in. So I'm just about to start to sew this piece and I've lined up my needle right on the corner of that A2, A1 point there. And I'm just gonna do a little fix stitch on there. Now you can just forward and reverse if that's what your machine will do. But I just wanna make sure I've got a really good anchor at that point. And then I've got my um, needle lined up with the center point on my foot here. And I'm keeping an eye on that red line there and just slowly sewing my way all the way along. And then when I get to the other end, I'm gonna make sure I'm right on the, the edge there and then run it back with another couple of stitches just to secure it. So next we're going to take this to the iron and get it pressed out flat. I'm back from the iron and I've pressed that seam out flat. So if I flip that back over now you can see there's my join and if I fold that back you can see that's 
where we've joined those two pieces. Now, what I am going to do is just trim off now a little bit of the excess fabric in those seams because especially when we've got lots of kind of really small tiny pieces together it can get a little bit bulky if you don't take those straight out and the other thing you need to remember is when you press that seam out you need to just make sure you haven't twisted your seam left or right because that will affect how it lines up with your piece on the other side so the next step as we can see is number two on to number three. So we're going to fold that back. Um, let's just make sure we get that right along its little line there. there. Yeah, that's pretty good. And see, we were a little bit close on that edge, but we've we've got enough there. So now what we're going to do is A2. Let's turn it around so we had the same way as we had it before. So A2 is where we're going to add that on. Now you can trim that seam allowance off first if it makes you more comfortable. Sometimes better to leave a little bit more fabric on there until you're happy that you've got um, everything in place. I've lost my little bit of purple. Um, just bear with me. Ah, it's under my machine. There we go. So now I'm using a purple in place of the green here. So now I'm needing another piece of green. And remember what we said earlier about whatever is your kind of lower number. So in this case, A2, that fabric will be right up against the paper. A3, which is the shape we're trying to create, that's going to be on the bottom of the pile. So we know that right in that corner is one of our places and then all the way along here. So I need to make sure I've got a piece of fabric that is big enough to cover all of that. So if I line that up against there, I can see I've got enough seam allowance all the way across the top. Is this point gonna be covered in fabric? Yes, it is. And is this point gonna be covered in fabric? Yes, it is. So there's plenty of fabric for me there. So I'm gonna fold that out and then stitch that line across there. been to the sewing machine and to the iron with this one and you can see that is now that little piece taking shape in the center and initially you'll wonder why am I bothering putting these really tiny pieces in but those really subtle changes in angle create almost kind of curves and it will give you a much more detail and much more shape to your piece so it's definitely worth doing those so let's flip that back over and flip that to there now we can take off the excess seam allowances on there so we'll get everything folded like that grab the scissors and take all of these excess bits off of here because we don't want them but just before you do that so you make sure you've got all your pieces you want to keep folded back out of the way and then we will press that back out so you can see that's now starting to take shape quite nicely and then the last piece that we need to add on is up here and it's this A4 piece. So we're going to fold that along there. And I've got quite a lot of excess fabric on here. So I'm going to use some of that to create my A4 piece. So I'm going to put a little bit more of a generous seam allowance along here. Now you can do this with a rotary cutter instead of scissors if you prefer. And then I'm going to use some of that bit that I've chopped off to create the bit that we're looking for here. Now, I've got a plain dyed fabric, which means, as you can see there, if it's going to fit better, I can just flip that fabric over and use it. Now, if you're using a patterned fabric, you may not be able to do that. So just bear that in mind. If you're cutting pieces out, you need to cut the opposite shape that you want and a little bit bigger. So you can see I've lined that up along there. Check my corners, plenty there, plenty there, plenty there. Open that up and back to the sewing machine. So that's that A piece complete. And the next step is just to trim off all those excess pieces. And I would leave yourself a little bit more on these really pointy corners, just so you've got a little bit more to work with when you're putting it together. And then once it's trimmed back down, it should look something like this. This piece has already been put together. You can see all of those joins in there. And then what you're going to do is go back to those instructions that we had. Let me just grab the picture and we're going to attach all four of these pieces in the order 
that it says on here. So A, which is the piece we've just done, we're going to attach that onto C, just so happens. I've already attached C and D together. So we're going to add A onto the top of there. And then we're going to add, once we've got those three pieces together, we're going to sew those together. And I'll take this to the machine, put it all together, and then show you the finished block. One more thing that I wanted to mention was just actually uh, attaching these pieces together because it's very, really, really tempting to kind of line it up there and then nothing will actually quite fit right. So what you're best off doing is actually piercing the um, paper at the very corner. And then if I just flip that over, you can do the same. Can you see on that side? So you can line up your two corners perfectly. And I wouldn't actually put that pin all the way through. I would do the same on this other side, just pierce both sides to line up those corners. That pin's no good, it's not pointy. Let me just get rid of that one, there we go. So through there, and then on the other side, do exactly the same, so line up those really accurate corner points where you wanna get those good matches. And then, rather than pins on this, I've actually got a little bag of clips because with the paper as well, if you put pins in and out, you'll find there's a lot of kind of undulation of your work and you'll get kind of wobbly bits. But if you just, once you've got those lined up and use those just to kind of centralize it, then you can actually just pop a couple of pins on and back to the sewing machine. That's the hummingbird complete now and the last thing that you're going to need to do is just flip it over and take the paper out now the best way to do this is to just kind of rip it and tear it very very carefully so if i just show you on this bit if you actually um use the perforations that you've created like a postage stamp but pull it can you just see i'm kind of pulling away from the stitches and what that will do is it won't put any stress on those stitches that you've made and it should come away quite easily. So if I flip it back over, let you see the finished one there. You can see it's a really, really pretty little pattern and you can then put this in, you'll maybe put a board around it, add it into a cushion or take it onto um, other projects as well.